Hi guys, let's start the new chapter, chapter number 15. It's called construction of polygon. Uh, before I start something new in this chapter, let's uh, quickly revise what we've learned in construction uh, in grade 6, grade 7 and grade 8. A quick reminder as well saying all constructions are done using only a scale and a compass. A scale and a compass. We do not use a protractor for this which means we do not use this is not to be used right we use only a compass like this and we use a scale so these are the only two things which are to be used to do any constructions for this chapter again this is one of the easiest chapters and the one of the most scoring chapters purely because uh, this is simple and also because uh, we've been doing this forever now so let's look at this so let's say I need to create a 60 and a 120 degree angle. So step one, I create my base. So on this point, let's say this is uh, point A. I need to create at point A 60 degree and 120 degree. So I'll take my compass. I'll keep it at point A and I will open it to a span of my choice. So my compass span of my choice uh, I've locked this so it, it doesn't move so I open my compass to a span of my choice and then I make a semicircle. Perfect. Now without changing the span I pick up my compass and keep it at the point where it intersects my base and I then cut the semicircle at one point. So let's cut it at one point make a small arc pick up my compass, keep it at the point where it cut the uh, semicircle and make a second arc. Perfect. And then I can remove my compass. So I have got two points and then I take my scale and I join A with these points. And I join A with these points. Perfect. So now that I've done this, my big angle is the 120 degree angle and the small angle is the 60 degree angle. Perfect. Now let's look at the second construction that we've learned earlier which is basically bisecting an angle. So I've already done this. Uh, this is an angle which is already there. Let's try and bisect the angle. So let's say this is point let's say this is a uh, a this is b and this is c so i need to bisect angle a b c i take my compass keep it at point b which is the angle that i need to bisect and then uh, take a span of my choice i have so let's stay let's say i take a span of this and then keeping it at b i cut both the arms of my angle at one point so Perfect. So I've cut both the uh, arms of my angle at one point. Let me just extend it slightly. Perfect. So let me just extend it slightly. Done. Then I pick up my compass without changing the span. I keep it at the point where it intersects BC and make an arc somewhere in the middle. Perfect. So I make an arc somewhere in the middle. Then I pick up the compass, keep it at the point where it intersected AB and again make an arc so that both the first arc and the second arc intersect. I take my scale and I join this intersection point with B and this is my bisecting an angle. Let's check if the angle has been bisected. Uh, I keep my compass here. This is 30 degree and let's see what's the second angle. Yes, this is 30 degree as well. Perfect. So my work done. Now let's look at the third construction that we've done in the previous years, which is basically perpendicular bisector of a line segment. So let's say this is the line segment that I need to bisect for which I need to make mark the midpoint which is basically perpendicular bisector. Let's say this line is AB and I need to find 
make the perpendicular bisector somewhere in the middle. Perfect. So then I take my compass. Uh, I open my compass to more than half the length of AB. Uh, is this more than half? Uh, I guess so, but let's still, yes, now this definitely is more than half. Um, keeping it at A, I make two arcs, one at the top of AB and one below AB. Slowly, yes, let's make an arc here one at the top and one below Then I pick up my compass keep it at B without changing the span I make two more arcs one cutting the previous one here and then cutting the other one also so let's make these two arcs perfect now that I've got these two points let's take the scale and let's join these two points Let's take the scale and join these two points. Let me extend this here. Perfect. So this is the perpendicular bisector, which means now this part and this part are equal. Let's give it name C and this angle is 90 degree. Perfect. So these are the basic three constructions that we've learned earlier. The fourth thing before we start the chapter is what I want to talk about is this which is certain properties of uh, different kind of parallelograms. So what are parallelograms? Parallelograms basically are uh, something like this where opposite sides are equal in length, opposite sides are equal in length and they are parallel to each other. Please note that in this software, they don't allow me to use a scale. That's why you may see that my lines are not straight, but the opposite sides are equal and opposite sides are parallel. So let's look at certain types of parallelograms. Uh, parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus and a square. Diagonals bisect each other in all four of them which means in a parallelogram diagonals bisect each other in a rectangle they bisect each other in a rhombus they bisect each other similarly in a square they bisect each other but are the diagonals equal no the diagonals are equal only in the case of a rectangle and in the case of a square so they are equal only in the case of a rectangle and in the case of a square now do the diagonals bisect vertex angle they are they bisect vertex angle only in the case of a rhombus and a square though this property won't be used in our construction but still this property is very important because we will use this property in construction we will use this property in construction and the most important this is the property that we'll use for construction which is diagonals are perpendicular to each other in a rhombus and a square so this is something that as we go on you will uh, uh, hopefully learn and be able to apply so now let's do let's do question number one so let's look at question number one now question number one says uh, oh sorry so question number one says construct a quadrilateral where the different sides are given so step one in any construction is a rough diagram if you do not draw a rough diagram you lose marks i'm repeating if you do not draw a rough diagram you lose marks so i have drawn a no, i draw a parallelogram it doesn't say it's a parallelogram so let me draw a, any basic uh, quadrilateral let's say this is the basic quadrilateral no angle no let's see what all i know so a b c and d AB is equal to 3.2 centimeter. BC is equal to 5.2 centimeter. CD is equal to 6.2 centimeter. And DA is equal to 4.2 centimeter. And BD is equal to 5.2 centimeter. So this is the information available to me. Let's see how I can construct. Uh, step one would be to figure out which one do you want to keep the base. 
So I've been um, earlier must have told you you can keep the base whichever way you like. So whichever line you like, you can keep the base unless the question specifically specifies which one is the base. Otherwise, you can choose your base. Though taking the longest side as the base is ideal, but is it mandatory? No. So let's keep the base as A B. So what will I do first? I will take I'll take you to construction, but let's look at what can I do. So first thing I'll do is construct my A B. Perfect. Now to so I've got point A and I've got point B. So I've got A and I've got B. This is 3.2. Next step, I need to find either C or I need to find D. So to find any vertex, I need to have two coordinates. Right? Minimum, so if I get two coordinates, I should be able to do, I should be able to find it. So let's look at D or C, whichever way. So let's look at C. C is 5.2 centimeter from D. So if I take a circle here, of 5.2 centimeter then C can be anywhere on this circle because it's at a distance of 5.2 is there any, so is it here or here we don't know the other coordinate of C we know is compared to D that it is 6.2 from D but do we know where D is no which means I should not be finding C first let me try and find D so the coordinates of D that I know that it is 4.2 from a. So if I take A as a center and I draw a circle of length or of radius 4.2 then D is anywhere on this circle and the other second coordinate I know of D that it's 5.2 from B. So if I keep my compass on uh, if I keep my center as B and if I draw a, a circle of 5.2 then this point where which is 5.2 from B and 4.2 from A will be my D. So perfect. Now the second step is find D and the third step would be from D I can find C because it is 6.2 from D and 5.2 from B. So let's try and do this construction. So step one I am taking my base as AB. So let's take the base as AB and AB is 3.2 centimeter in length. I'm starting from 1 which means I will have to go up to 4.2. Perfect. So I've got my AB as 3.2. I'm repeating this uh, one. The pen here is not very comfortable to write. So please pardon my handwriting here oh anyway i ended up changing everything so let me just redraw a b which is 3.2 so i draw start from 1 and i go up to 4.2 now i will not use my time in writing the dimensions but anyway 4.2 uh, sorry 3.2 the next one that i need to do is find d so what do we know about d that d is 4.2 centimeter away from A. So let me just measure 4.2. I keep it on 0 and I have to open this pan so that I keep it on 0. I need to open this pan so that it goes up to 4.2. Perfect. I'll keep it on A. I make an arc in a manner that it is 4.2 from A. Perfect. Now the next thing that I know about this is that D is 5.2 from B. So let me now measure 5.2. So this is 5.2. Yes, I lock my compass, keep it on. Is this 5.2? Yeah, this is 5.2. I keep it on B and I cut my first arc in a manner that it gives me my point B. I hope you notice now that this point is at a distance of 4.2 from A and 5.2 from B. The next thing I need is uh, a point C. Now for C I know C is 
6.2 from D and 5.2 from B. Let me just draw a rough diagram here as well. Will make my life simple. So this is A, B, C, D. This is 3.2. This is 6.2. This is 4.2. And this is 5.2. Perfect. Anything else I know? No. So DC is also 5.2. So now I need from D it is 5.2 centimeter away. So I will measure 5.2. Perfect. From B, I keep it on B and cut an arc of 5.2 centimeter. So C will lie anywhere on this arc and it is also 6.2 from D. So I open this and I measure 6.2. Perfect. So now I keep my compass on D and cut this arc in a manner that it is cutting the first arc at point D. Perfect. Now I take a scale and I join these points. Perfect. And then, uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, the other thing which will be, which is advisable is whatever they've given you, you should draw that line as well. But I am, okay, so you should draw a, so we found DD as well. So you should draw any line inside which has been given as dotted lines. No, this is not D, sorry, this is C, my mistake, this is C. Now, uh, you should also write all the measurements. Please pardon my pen here. This is 3.2. This is 6.2. This is 5.2. This is 5.2. Perfect. Let's move on.